the moon, our ancient guardian, choreographing tides in silence, a poetic relic barely doing its job in the sky. That dull, lifeless, overhyped chunk of rock just hanging above us. It's been up there for billions of years, pulling our tides and stabilizing Earth's axis. How utterly thrilling. Sure, it made life on Earth possible, but let's be honest, it's basically a celestial freeloading roommate just sitting there doing the bare minimum. So, let's shake things up. Let's swap out the moon for something more dramatic. Enter Mars, our new planetary neighbor turned cosmic menace. It brings stronger gravity, violent tides, and the potential to destabilize Earth as we know it. What could go wrong? A few floods? Maybe some minor climate instability? Oh, and let's not forget the teeny tiny, hardly worth mentioning issue of Earth's rotation grinding to a halt, turning days into weeks, weeks into months, and sending our climate into a full-blown apocalyptic meltdown. But hey, at least we'll get some extra time to enjoy the view. <laughs> All right, since we're making bold cosmic swaps, let's put the Moon and Mars in a head-to-head -head battle using cold, hard scientific data. Because why not humiliate the Moon while we're at it? The Moon is a pitiful 3,474 kilometers in diameter, barely a quarter of Earth's size. Its mass? A measly 1.2% of Earth's. Honestly, it's a miracle it even has any gravitational pull at all. With Mars, now we're talking. At 6,779 kilometers in diameter, Mars is nearly twice the size of the Moon and 11% of Earth's mass. In other words, an actual celestial heavyweight. The Moon gravity so weak, one-sixth of Earth's, that astronauts practically moonwalk by accident. It's basically a zero-gravity playground. Mars boasts a more respectable 38% of Earth's gravity, meaning you wouldn't just float away like a lost balloon. Walking would feel light, but at least you wouldn't risk bouncing into orbit. The moon atmosphere? Ha! If you enjoy being pelted with solar radiation and micrometeorites, the moon is the vacation spot for you. Mars thin, mostly CO2, and utterly unbreathable. But at least it has something. It even has weather, dust storms, and clouds. You know, like a real planet. The moon is an endless wasteland of craters, dust, and more dust. If you've seen one lunar landscape, congratulations, you've seen them all. Mars is home to Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, and Valles Marineris, a canyon so massive it makes the Grand Canyon look like a roadside ditch. Mars isn't just a planet, it's a geological flex. The moon has some frozen ice lurking in permanently shadowed craters. If you want a drink, bring your own. Mars enjoys polar ice caps, underground water reserves, and maybe even liquid water. It's practically a desert oasis compared to the Moon. The Moon is pretty close to Earth, but lacks a breathable atmosphere, stable temperatures, or anything remotely useful for long-term survival. While Mars is farther away, sure, but at least it has essential resources like water ice, carbon dioxide, and an actual atmosphere, albeit a bad one. If we had to pick, we'd take our chances with Mars. So Mars has won the head-to-head -head battle. Great. Now, let's talk about how replacing the Moon with Mars would turn our once predictable sky into a cosmic horror show. Remember when the Moon was just a peaceful little white circle in the sky? Well, say goodbye to that. With Mars in its place, nights would be dominated by a giant red mass looming like some kind of interplanetary doomsday clock. No more poetic moonlit strolls, just an ominous blood-red glow hovering above, staring at you like it knows something you don't. Lunar eclipses used to be an elegant affair, a subtle darkening of the moon as Earth's shadow passed over it. With Mars, forget subtlety. A lunar eclipse would turn the sky into a dim red nightmare, where Mars's atmosphere bends the sunlight into something that looks straight out of a dystopian sci-fi flick. Oh, and solar eclipses, they'd be completely unhinged. Imagine a massive Martian disk blocking out the sun, casting the Earth into an eerie rust-colored darkness. Romantic, right? The moon already washes out some stars, but Mars would crank that up to 11. Its sheer size and reflectivity would flood the night sky with its ruddy glow, making deep space stargazing a thing of the past. Hope you weren't attached to seeing the Milky Way. All right, now let's talk about the real nightmare scenario, gravity. You might think, oh cool, Mars is bigger, so we get more gravity. 
Well, congratulations, you just signed up for Planetary Chaos. Remember how the moon's gravity gently tugs at Earth's oceans, creating predictable, manageable tides? Yeah, Mars isn't about that life. Its 10 times greater mass would send ocean levels into an uncontrollable frenzy. High tides would become city-swallowing tsunamis, while low tides might drain entire coastlines, leaving ships stranded and ports rendered useless. Entire coastal economies? Gone. Beachfront resorts? Underwater ruins. The flooding wouldn't just stop at coastal cities, it would surge inland, displacing millions. Meanwhile, low tides would strip ecosystems bare, collapsing marine food chains. And let's not forget the ever-changing gravitational pull. Constant shifts in sea level would erode shorelines, reshape continents, and turn Earth's water cycle into an unpredictable nightmare. Hope you enjoy surprise inland seas. And now, dear viewers, it's time for your brilliant insights. What do you think? Are we exaggerating, or would Mars really be the celestial home wrecker we claim? Maybe you have a genius plan to fix these catastrophic tidal nightmares. We're sure the scientific community is dying to hear it. Drop your thoughts in the comments and tell us, would you welcome Mars as our new cosmic overlord? Or are you suddenly feeling a deep appreciation for the moon's bare minimum contributions? Now back to our regular programming. As if tsunamis and flooded cities weren't enough, Mars replacing the moon would wreak havoc on Earth's axial tilt. You know, the thing that keeps our seasons nice and predictable? Yeah, that's about to go straight out the window. The moon currently acts like Earth's personal gravitational anchor, keeping our axial tilt at a comfortable 23.5 degrees. This ensures regular seasons, stable climates, and the ability to plan vacations without worrying if your favorite beach will become a tundra next year. With its tenfold increase in gravitational pull, Mars wouldn't stabilize Earth. It would destabilize it. Earth's axial tilt would start shifting wildly, leading to some truly absurd seasons. Imagine summer temperatures in Antarctica while Los Angeles gets buried under ice. One year, the tropics could experience snowstorms, and the next, the poles could be basking in 30 degrees Celsius heat. Basically, Earth would become a spinning disaster wheel of random climates. Without a stable tilt, ice ages could come and go like bad reality TV reboots. Farming would become a nightmare, ecosystems would collapse, and migration patterns would turn into mass extinction events. Humanity? We'd either adapt fast or start investing in underground bunkers. Just when you thought things couldn't get worse, Mars' massive gravitational influence wouldn't just mess with our tides and axial tilt, it would drag on Earth's rotation like a planetary-sized brake pad. Right now, we enjoy a relatively brisk 24-hour day, perfect for work, sleep, and pretending we have free time. But Mars, being the overbearing cosmic bully it is, would pull on Earth just enough to slow our rotation over time. Days would start getting longer, first by minutes, then by hours, and eventually by entire weeks. Ever wanted to live in a world where the sun stays in the sky for days at a time, scorching everything? Welcome to that reality. Longer days mean longer exposure to sunlight, translating to blistering hot, unlivable days and freezing endless nights. Crops would struggle to survive, ecosystems would collapse, and entire species would go extinct just trying to cope with the inconsistency. Oh, and let's not forget the added bonus of hurricane force winds from an atmosphere that can't keep up with a planet slowing down. Given enough time, Earth's rotation could slow so much that we'd become tidally locked to Mars, meaning one day would be 655 hours long. That's 13.65 days of darkness and 13.65 days of light. All right, so Mars has turned our planet into a spinning, flooded, freezing, overheating disaster zone. But humans are annoyingly good at surviving things they really shouldn't. So what would it take to keep civilization afloat in this Mars-ruled nightmare? Since coastal cities would be swallowed by megatides faster than a sandcastle at high tide, humanity would have to abandon the shores entirely. Expect a mass exodus to higher elevations. Good news for mountain towns, bad news for anyone who thought their ocean view condo was a good investment. New megacities would rise on artificially reinforced highlands designed to withstand the constant gravitational abuse Mars inflicts on our oceans. With Earth's tilt-throwing seasons into pure chaos, the only way to maintain stable temperatures would be to live in climate-controlled domes or underground. 
Say goodbye to open air cities and hello to massive biospheres where we grow food indoors and pretend the outside world isn't a complete disaster. Think of it as the VIP lounge of survival. Except you have no choice but to stay inside. Mars's gravitational grip on Earth would mess with everything from atmospheric circulation to ocean currents. The solution? Artificial climate regulation on a planetary scale. This means geoengineering projects to stabilize temperatures, massive space-based mirrors to regulate sunlight, and orbital structures designed to keep Earth's tilt in check. The only question is, who's paying for all this? So, there you have it. Replace the moon with Mars and we get the ultimate reality show, Earth's slow motion apocalypse. Tsunamis, frozen tropics, superheated wastelands, endless storms, and a planet that spins on its own chaotic terms. Sounds like a fun little science experiment, right? But hey, at least we'd have an incredibly dramatic sky to look at while civilization crumbles. In the end, the moon might not be flashy, but at least it doesn't actively try to murder us. So maybe, just maybe, we should appreciate that quiet little rock up there. Hit that like button, subscribe for more catastrophic what-if scenarios, and let us know what other completely unhinged disasters you'd like us to mercilessly dissect next. Who knows? Maybe next time we'll explore what happens when the sun decides it's had enough of us and just casually expands into a red giant roasting earth like a marshmallow over a bonfire. Or maybe we'll discuss what happens if gravity just stopped working one day. Either way, you won't want to miss it.